SpaceX has conducted five Starship launches so far, but the latest, Flight 5, was more successful than all the previous four combined. This mission marked a significant turning point for the Starship program. One of the most significant moments in this mission was the successful recovery of Super Heavy Booster B-12 by SpaceX's innovative chopstick mechanism. For the first several minutes of the flight, the Super Heavy Booster functioned flawlessly, providing the necessary thrust to lift Starship into the upper atmosphere. The rocket reached supersonic speeds as it ascended, its Raptor engines working in perfect synchronization to balance the immense forces and stresses experienced during flight. Approximately two minutes into the flight, the rocket hit max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Passing this stage is crucial, as it's one of the most intense phases for any rocket launch. Once past max Q, the Super Heavy continued its journey upward, pushing Starship further into space. As the clock ticked closer to seven minutes, SpaceX's advanced systems prepared the booster for stage separation, where the upper stage Starship would detach to continue its journey, while the booster would begin its descent back toward Earth. This separation is a delicate process that requires precise timing and control, and SpaceX executed it flawlessly. With the upper stage continuing its trajectory, attention turned to the booster's return. Instead of burning up in the atmosphere or crashing into the ocean like traditional rockets, Booster B-12 was programmed to perform a controlled descent back to the launch site, which had never been attempted at this scale before. The descent involved intricate maneuvers, with the Raptor engines reigniting to control its speed and trajectory. The guidance systems, aided by a mix of GPS, onboard sensors, and real-time telemetry, calculated the exact angles and thrust adjustments needed to bring the booster home safely. As Booster B-12 descended, it approached the moment everyone had been waiting for, the catch. SpaceX's Mechazilla arms, a massive mechanical structure designed to catch the booster mid-air, were activated. This system had been tested before, but never fully realized with a live returning booster of this size and complexity. With near-perfect precision, the chopstick arms reached out and caught the descending super-heavy booster as it came into position, cradling it gently and preventing a hard landing. This move was not only spectacular to watch, but also a historic moment for space technology. Successfully catching the booster was a game-changer. The reusability of such a massive rocket had long been the ultimate goal for SpaceX. Traditionally, rockets are expendable, meaning they burn up in the atmosphere or crash into the ocean after launch, making space travel expensive and resource-intensive. However, with this successful recovery, SpaceX proved that it could reuse the most powerful rocket ever built, paving the way for significant cost savings in future missions. This achievement not only revolutionizes rocket design, but also marks a massive step toward SpaceX's broader vision of making space travel as routine and affordable as air travel. But the mission wasn't over just yet. Approximately two hours and 38 minutes after liftoff, the chopstick mechanism began the process of lowering the Super Heavy Booster B-12 back to its resting place on the orbital launch mount. This part of the process was equally important as it demonstrated SpaceX's ability to efficiently handle post-launch operations. The recovery was completed in under three hours from the moment the booster was caught, showing how swiftly and efficiently SpaceX could work to prepare the booster for its next phase. After being securely placed back on the launch mount, Booster B-12 began the process of post-flight inspections, where engineers carefully examined every part of the rocket to assess its condition and determine what repairs or modifications, if any, were necessary for future use. The day following the successful Starship Flight 5, SpaceX confirmed another crucial step in the recovery process. Approximately eight hours post-launch, the booster's quick disconnect was successfully reconnected to Super Heavy Booster B-12. This step is pivotal for SpaceX's plans, as the QD mechanism is essential for refueling and servicing the booster after landing. This connection also signals the beginning of the booster's refurbishment process. Without wasting any time, SpaceX had already rolled out a transport stand to the launch site, preparing to move the booster back to the production facility for further inspection and analysis. 
This efficient process is typical for SpaceX, a company focused on rapid iteration and reuse. Their long-term goal is to turn around rockets quickly, reducing the time between launches to mere days or even hours. However, there's still a lot of work to be done before Super Heavy Booster B-12 can fly again. First and foremost, SpaceX engineers need to conduct a series of detailed inspections on the booster. This involves carefully analyzing every part of the rocket, from the heat shields to the Raptor engines, to ensure that everything performed as expected during the mission and that any potential wear or damage can be addressed before the next flight. One of the most pressing concerns after the landing was whether there would be any damage to the systems underneath the rocket, such as the orbital launch mount and the water deluge system. These systems are critical not only during launch but also during landing, as they help dissipate the extreme heat generated by the rocket's engines and mitigate potential damage to the infrastructure. Thankfully, early reports indicated that both the launch mount and the water deluge system had emerged unscathed from the flight. This is a significant relief for SpaceX, as damage to these systems could have resulted in costly repairs and potential delays for future launches. Additionally, there were no significant signs of damage to the booster's quick disconnect system, despite the fact that the booster passed through visible flames during its descent through the chopstick arms. Musk and SpaceX later confirmed these promising updates. In a detailed statement, Musk explained that while some of the outer engine nozzles on the Super Heavy booster were slightly warped due to the extreme heat and aerodynamic forces during the flight, this damage was minimal and entirely expected. The heat and stresses experienced during re-entry are substantial, especially for a rocket as powerful as Super Heavy. Importantly, these issues are considered minor, and are easily fixable during the refurbishment process. Musk emphasized that the booster didn't suffer any explosions or critical failures, marking a significant victory for the mission and a testament to the robustness of SpaceX's designs. Now that the booster is back on the ground, SpaceX will conduct a more thorough inspection of every component. This includes analyzing the booster's heat shield, which protects it during re-entry, and checking the structural integrity of the rocket's frame. They will also inspect the Raptor engines to ensure they are in good condition for future flights. Any parts that are damaged or worn out will either be repaired or replaced. This process is crucial for the booster's reuse, and SpaceX aims to refine these procedures over time to make the refurbishment process as fast as possible. Before we go any further, for those of you who haven't had the chance to witness the incredible Starship launch in person, we've got a special treat for you. We have the most realistic Starship models available on eBay. Head over to the link in the description and grab one to bring a piece of space history to your collection. Beyond the physical inspection of the booster, SpaceX also gathers a tremendous amount of data during each flight. This data is used to refine their flight algorithms and improve the performance of future missions. Every flight, successful or not, provides SpaceX with valuable information that helps them improve their rockets for the next launch. In this case, Flight 5 was particularly important because it was the first time SpaceX successfully caught the booster with the Makezilla arms. The data from this catch will be analyzed to improve future landing procedures and any necessary adjustments will be made before Flight 6. Despite these successes, one of the biggest challenges SpaceX faces moving forward is not technical but regulatory. The FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, plays a crucial role in overseeing and approving every SpaceX launch, and it's no secret that these regulatory processes can cause delays. No matter how successful a flight is, the FAA will always conduct a thorough post-flight review to ensure that public safety was maintained, that all regulatory requirements were met, and that there were no violations during the flight. These reviews can sometimes take weeks or even months, slowing down SpaceX's aggressive launch schedule. Historically, after almost every Starship launch, the FAA has found something to investigate or penalize, resulting in delays. For instance, after Starship's first flight, the FAA conducted an extensive review that took several months, much to SpaceX's frustration. Even though Flight 5 was a resounding success, there's still a high likelihood that the FAA will conduct a thorough investigation before approving the next flight. 
Musk has previously expressed his frustration with these delays, arguing that they are unnecessary and that they stifle innovation. He has even hinted that if it weren't for these regulatory roadblocks, SpaceX could achieve up to 12 Starship launches per year, allowing them to make rapid progress toward their long-term goals, including space tourism and missions to Mars. This regulatory challenge is particularly frustrating for SpaceX because their internal processes are designed for rapid iteration. Musk has long stated that the goal is to reuse Starship and its booster within an hour of landing. According to this ambitious plan, the booster would return to the launch site within about five minutes, with the remaining time spent refueling and placing a new Starship atop the booster. While achieving this goal will take time, SpaceX has made significant strides toward rapid reusability, and the success of Flight 5 is a major step in that direction. The big question now is, when will Flight 6 happen? Given that the FAA will need to conduct its post-flight review, it's difficult to say exactly when the next Starship flight will occur. These reviews can sometimes take weeks, as the FAA examines every aspect of the mission to ensure that safety protocols were followed and that there were no violations. SpaceX will likely be pushing for a quick turnaround, but it ultimately depends on how long the FAA's review process takes. That's all for today's update. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you in the next video.